Hi everyone, Stock Mo here. It was a red day out there, and we're here to dissect all the action. The Fed, the Fed notes came out, and boy, they shocked a lot of people. Uh, and I got to tell you, when you see that kind of shock, you're going to see the market reacting. And we're going to get into a lot of this. Crypto got hammered, stocks got hammered. Uh, there were a few that are doing well, like I would suspect, and we're going to talk about that if you're looking for opportunities. Now, before we get into all this, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button for me. I would appreciate it. And down below, take advantage of the Moomoo link. They're going to give you a free share of Lucid right now worth around $39 for depositing $100 or more. And you can get up to five free stocks worth up to $3,500 each if you deposit $2,000 or more. So at least get that. All you got to do is do that $100. The next thing, though, Gemini. This is the one I really love. And I did end up buying more Sandbox Crypto on Gemini today. For those members over at the Patreon, you already know that. I took advantage of some of the red. And you will see that you get uh, $20 in free bid. Bitcoin for trading $100 or more using my link. And then, of course, the Sandbox, they have that. Coinbase, Robinhood, Weeble do not. So when, when they start to add it, which I think they will, you will see Sandbox have a nice little jump, I think. All right. And then we move into portfolios for those who are watching. And you can see we'll start with the $100 a week one for the VOO. This is the S&P 500. And you can see it's down 1.49% since Monday. That's, that's a big rundown. We had a nice little finish to the Santa Claus rally as they say, where everything ends up up for seven trading days, and now it's just getting hammered. And you can thank that to the Fed, of course. Uh, now, this is our benchmark, down 1.49%. The aggressive portfolio, we started with Tesla. Tesla's down 8.35% since we got into it, and we're easily underperforming the S&P 500. I would absolutely expect that as we move forward, if the market stays red. If it goes green, I would expect this thing to crush the market. But that's the aggressive portfolio. The conservative one, this is gonna be the one where I'm doing a lot of uh, value investing. I'm looking at the fundamentals, PE ratios, price to sales, all kinds of good stuff, and find out which of the best stocks right now uh, to put into a conservative portfolio for the idea that the rates are gonna be coming, and of course, they're gonna be you know, settling that overall trillions of dollars that they have in purchases from the Fed. We're gonna, we're gonna figure out what we can do for that. So this one won't go up as much on the green days and down as much on the red days. It is already outperforming the S&P 500. And then of the last one, the crypto, this is the most risky one because there's a lot of things behind this that can affect it. And I can tell you right now, it's down 4.96%. Uh, it, it's outperforming the aggressive one, but it's only because we only got one position in there. But we're gonna talk about all of these. If you'd like to see my overall portfolio, my crypto portfolio, my new 2022, and the Patreon only portfolios, click that link down below to the uh, to my Patreon. We have a private Discord, thousands of members. Highly suggest coming over and join us. Now we move into what's going on in the market. In the market, you can see Dow Jones down a full percent, S&P almost 2%, NASDAQ down over 3.3%, same thing with the Russell 3.3%. 3.3%. VIX is spiking. Everybody's panicking. You're seeing a lot of blood in the water. And you got to ask yourself, you know, Warren Buffett always says, when everybody's greedy, be fearful. When everybody's fearful, be greedy. I can tell you, everybody's fearful. Uh, there's a lot of uh, damage being done. And uh, we're going to take a look at some of that damage right now. So as we see some of the main plays I have in my portfolio, all of them got hammered. And it was a rough day because crypto got hammered. You got some of the big growth stocks getting hammered and not many stocks were spared from this. You're gonna see a lot of red out there. Now the question becomes, is this a one day thing? Or are we gonna continue to see red moving forward from the Fed notes? And we're gonna take a look at that. The Fed notes, and this is what it's all about right now. The Federal Reserve puts wheels in motion for balance sheet reduction. They got trillions. I think it's eight trillion. We're gonna find out, it's in the article somewhere here. But minutes from the Fed's December meeting indicated that the officials are ready to aggressively dial back policy help. In other words, they're not gonna have that help for the, the market like they have been, making it an easy money to be made by all the big investors. If you put all this together and you're seeing the Fed, which propped up the market, got it up there to, uh, to PE ratios that were 
absolutely way above normal, you realize that sometime in 2022, as they're dialing all this back, you're gonna see a pullback in the stock market. There's no doubt in my mind about that. Am I excited about it? No, but it's gonna happen eventually. Now, earnings for companies should continue to rise, which is good. That helps alleviate some of that pressure. But the other part is that a lot of the prices that got run up, I think tech stocks got ran up a lot, uh, they're gonna come back in 2022 uh, down a little bit. So I have been shedding a lot of my tech plays and some other high risk plays to move into more sound companies. Uh, uh, I have bought a few more companies today. Like I said, I got those buys over at the Patreon. Come over and check them out. I love the support and uh, we're all in it together over there. So it's definitely a great positive community. Now, uh, I did get some more financials today. I bought another financial. I'm looking at some other companies out there I think are uh, undervalued that could do well as the pandemic subsides, which I think will happen hopefully in the next three months. And then they should start, we'll call them recovery plays. So there's some opportunities out there, especially in red days like this. I did get out of some of the leverage plays, the leverage plays such as Soxel, S-O-X-L, and I got out of TQQ, um, TQQQ, the triple leverage for that. And then um, I moved into, like I said, some of the safer plays, single, no more triple leverage. Like I said, I feel like I proved my point with triple leverage. If you feel confident that the market's gonna do well like I did last year, you can make a ton of cash, and we did. So I have a couple more that I'm gonna be getting out of over the next two days, uh, which was Russell, which ended up not really doing what I wanted to do. Didn't really lose or make much on that. Uh, but the other ones I do have of FAS and uh, what else did we have in there? The um, ERX, which was the triple leveraged energy. They're still doing well. I'm watching for those because I still believe um, I'm going to get out of those now, but I'm still looking at getting into some ETF single for those because I think they're going to have a decent year, but you never know. And so it's definitely something. So now when we look at the Fed, and that gives you an idea of what I'm doing right now. Um, when you look at the Fed, you can also see uh, was subject to extended discussion, which was policymakers pointing to a reduction in bond holdings. Not only are they increase, you know, they're getting done uh, with the purchasing of the bonds monthly, which should be done by, I think, March. And then um, now they're going to start reducing the bond holdings, okay? And so that was pretty big. And uh, I think they said that, from what I'm reading, is that that could begin when they start to, uh, per, when they start to increase the rates out there. And put all this together, and I want you to add one more variable I don't hear anybody talking about. And this is billions of dollars of money going into the economy. It won't be there. And I thought we had Q1 to be pretty safe, but it might not be. We might see that correction I was talking about earlier in Q1 or Q2, which was the student loans that are on deferment from a lot of people out there. I think they all come due in May, I believe. I'll have to double check this, but I believe it was May and everybody didn't have to pay. And I believe it's like up there close to, I think it's between six and $8 billion. That will not be getting spent or saved. They will have to start paying that. And so that's gonna be a big hit to the market. And then you got the, the rates increased. You got the, the purchasing stopping and going opposite. We're gonna be selling. And so there's a lot of pressure going into the market and the market, let's be honest, is overpriced based on PE ratios of the long term. So we know we got a lot of issues out there. Eventually it's gonna to come to a head. And like I said, I do believe it's gonna happen this year. That's why I've been changing things up over at the Patreon and getting some different uh, stocks in there, some more insurance, like I said, the financials, energy, uh, healthcare. I bought some more healthcare today as well. So there's some opportunities out there. So as you can see, when they get into this though, uh, they said the Fed will start rolling off nearly 8.3 trillion in treasuries and mortgage-backed securities it's holding. Statements out of the uh, meeting indicated the process could begin in 2022, possibly in the next several months. If I see possibly, that means it's gonna. In my mind, as an investor, I, I believe it's going to happen because they are doing everything they can to fight this inflation, to make sure it's under control, and they're gonna go all in on this, and I believe that. And so what do you see when they go all in? Well, you're gonna see this happen. One, you saw what happened in the market today. You're gonna start to see some pullbacks. Now, tomorrow's gonna be a big day. We'll see if we can get some green. If I continue to see red tomorrow, I'm gonna be a little bit more nervous. If I see a nice little bounce back, I'll feel a little better, but we'll have to see how Friday finishes. But crypto is gonna be under a lot of pressure. 
Why? Well, crypto, let's, I showed many videos in 2022 or 2021 how crypto was very closely correlated to the inflation. Now, everybody, it's not right there. Today, we have high inflation, so crypto should be up, Mo. No, they know that the Fed is going to attack even more aggressive on inflation. And if there is a correlation, a lot of money in there that has been hedged with that, hedging inflation using crypto. And now you know the Fed is not, not only are they getting aggressive, they're getting super aggressive. And so that super aggressiveness is getting priced in right now. And you're seeing almost a 5% drop for uh, Bitcoin today. And I think a lot of people have been slowly taking their money out already. Uh, if you go over the six months, you can see where we topped out. And then you get in that talk in November, December of the Fed getting, you know, inflations were high and we, we popped up, but then the Fed started getting more aggressive and people realized the Fed was gonna start attacking it. So they start taking their money out and that's leading to where we're, what you're seeing now. Does that mean that Ethereum is gonna follow? Yes. In my mind, Ethereum was gonna see a downward push. The question is how much? I think Ethereum is still better than Bitcoin. I think as Ethereum goes through the next few years, I still think Ethereum hits between 10 and 30,000 by the end of 2025. So that's my thought on this. But right now you're gonna see some downward pressures and I'm not sure how low it goes. Uh, a lot of people ask me that. That's the thing about crypto. If you're in crypto, understand that this thing can go up and down 10 to 50% in any given day. And you can see that quite frequently with some of the smaller altcoins. But I, I still feel pretty good about Ethereum. I did sell my Bitcoin today. I sold my Bitcoin uh, before most of the major drop. It was just because I didn't want to be in Bitcoin anymore. I don't like the energy arguments out there uh, that I'm seeing in government. They're, they're having issues around the world. And personally, I'm just not a fan of it. I'm a more of a fan of Ethereum. So I did sell my Bitcoin and I am moving. I moved some of it in the sandbox today and I will be moving other uh, portions of that into stocks and other altcoins out there, including Ethereum. So now, as we look at everything as one big hole, it's a rough day out there. I'm not sure if this is the beginning of a correction, 10% or more down in the S&P 500 from the high, but I'm not going to be surprised if it goes that route starting now. But I did expect to see that probably Q2, Q3. I thought we were all right for Q1, but maybe not. And so I might have to speed up my transition of my portfolio a little bit. Uh, we'll find out very, very soon. I'll be on here to discuss some of the moves I'm making. If you want to see exactly what I'm doing, check out the Patreon link down below. Come over and join us. I always give them a heads up on my buys and sells and what I'm doing. So that's what I got for you. If you haven't done it, get that Moo Moo link down below. Get that free share. A lucid deposit $100 or more. Hit the Gemini link. Uh, check out that sandbox over there, but trade $100 or more and you'll get $20 in free Bitcoin. And I do have Coinbase down there where you can get uh, some free Bitcoin just for doing an email and ID verification. We have a BlockFi where you can get up to 250 in free Bitcoin for certain deposit levels. And of course, check out the Patreon. Come on over and join me. I appreciate you stopping by. Let's get out there and make some money.